of your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And we just pray in the spirit together. Just pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit. Rebe ba ba na ka ba ra da ba na ka ba ra da, 
I just saw something. It's a quick what God is doing. I just saw something like tortoise. Tortoise. You know tortoise. I saw something like tortoise walking out of somebody's life. No, don't worry. Don't, I just I saw it now. Something like tortoise walking out of somebody's life. And the Lord is saying that it's not as if there's no progress, but it is too slow. 
it is too slow. If we have to depend on this level of speed, your entire life will come and go. And please help, help. Your entire life will come and go. And we will not be able to testify of the faithfulness of God. I just saw like Tortis walking out of somebody's life. Jesus. We receive the speed that comes by your spirit. Ah. We receive the speed that comes by your spirit. We receive the speed that comes by your spirit. We receive the speed that comes by your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to shout that word speed. We're going to shout it seven times. Before we sit down, we're going to shout that word speed. And we're going to shout it seven times. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hmm. Those efforts. Mm. Mm. There's no need to waste time. If I say one, we'll shout speed. We'll do it seven times. Are you ready? One. Speed. Two. Speed. Three. Four. Five. Say that. Say that. Say We're going to do six again. We're going to do six again. Six. Uh, uh. We're going to do we're going to do six again. But the Lord but the Lord is saying to me about somebody here. Please listen. The Lord is saying to me about somebody here that in the month in the month of July next year that's what the Lord is saying. In the month of July next year you'll be numbered among the greats. Listen. You will num you'll be numbered among the greats. I'm not saying among the greats in Narai or no, no, no. You will be numbered among the greats in the month of July next year. Lift up your hand everywhere. We're going to shout that six again. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. I see, I see your name just flying around the world. You'll be numbered among the great in the month of July. Are you ready? Six. For the seventh one. Ah. 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 
before we, we shout the seventh one, the Lord will have me say this. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Yes, I don't know who that is, but the Lord is saying to me to say to you, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Though darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness the people, say, but my light will be seen upon thee, because I will arise upon thee. Say, for Gentiles will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. See, as I said that, the Lord, the angels of the Lord just began to beam light upon certain persons. Just began to beam light upon certain persons. Some people are coming under an intense heat of this light that I speak about. Intense heat. No. No. Your current situation cannot handle it, so it will have to change. It will have to bend. Your heart will melt in the presence of this illumination. Your heart will melt in the presence of this illumination. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Lord will have me say to you that you close your ears to the accolades of men for the things they are saying about you now is a limitation to what I'm about to do. So close your ears to the accolades of men and look ahead of you. Look ahead of you. Look ahead. 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 Yes. For I will orchestrate. I will manipulate your ways to yield to my instructions. Are you ready for the seventh one? I'll count one to seven. When I get to the seven, then we'll shout speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Thank you. We ask that you speak to our hearts expressly. Do what only you can do in the few moments that we have. Let Jesus alone be glorified. As we behold your law, we are changed from glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. And the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Please sit. Right. Um, Leviticus, very quickly, Leviticus chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. Verse 9. From verse 9 to verse 13. Now, okay, very quickly, let me make a very important announcement. Please listen. Next week, by the grace of God, we'll be having, we'll be having, I don't want to call it a special service because it's something that we, we are likely going to be doing a lot of as much as God helps us and grants us grace. But next week we'll be having a prayer and worship service. Hallelujah. I thought somebody would be excited about that. Mm -hmm. 
for being having another prayer and worship service and because we want to have a lot of time to pray it's actually tagged prayer and worship service intimacy series that's what it's called it's an intimacy series and because of the because of the procratic time we want to have to pray and to worship we would actually be starting here on, um, next week by three o'clock hallelujah yes we are starting by three we will start praying we want to have long hours of prayer hallelujah yes prayer and worship we want to pray and just worship how many of you were blessed the last one we had how many of you were blessed all right so we're going to be having that come invite as many people as you can um, to come and pray we are coming to pray and when we are coming tell them we are coming to pray don't tell them don't tell them they are coming to eat rice hallelujah hallelujah tell them we are coming to pray and the reason why that is important is so that their hearts will be prepared uh, it's not just about bringing people that's not the essence we want people who will really come and are ready to pray so while of course we would want people to be filled and sit outside and all that while it's what we would love but much more than just that we want people to come and pray so let their hearts be ready so the person will not come and sit down and be looking at you and looking at all of us as we are praying and sweating and be wondering what's going on here because you told them that they are coming to eat rice they are now angry <laughs> because they didn't even eat before leaving the house so that they can come and eat rice tell them that we are coming to pray we are actually coming to enjoy God in the place of prayer so yes next week the flyers will be out when they are out please do well to share them do well to invite as many as you can and we also please encourage you to actively participate in all fellowship activities as much as they are here to help you um, and both on ground and online share these materials if you're not following all of our social media handles please do so and the lord will bless you and share to other people to also follow and be blessed in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ amen so leviticus chapter 6 from verse 9 we'll read down to verse 13 are we ready are we ready can you hear me very well at the back you can hear me okay so are we ready to read please let's read as loud as we can i understand that <laughs> quite a number of things are not going the way you want them to go um, especially for those of you who were still expecting that um, the the presidential election tribunal will favor you <laughs> and then they now came and said said their own some people were really discouraged but don't be we're in the house of God, amen? Uh, so be excited. It doesn't matter who is the president of Nigeria. Jesus is still on the throne. Are we correct? Yes. And whatever God wants to do, he will do. Amen. Yes. All right, let's read together. One, two, three, let's go. Command Aaron and his sons. You see, I say, I say there's something bothering us. They are not. Oh yeah, let's read again. 
One, two, three, let's go. And his son say, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning. And the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. Now, what God was doing here was to show Moses something. He was trying to teach Moses about the very law that we know that we've called the law of the burnt offering. And in that teaching, he was trying to explain why it is called the burnt offering. He said it is the burnt offering, and this is the reason why, because of the burning upon the altar. Okay? Please follow me. Because of the burning upon the altar. Not even necessarily because of the sacrifice now, but because of the burning itself upon the altar. That's why it is the burnt offering. And he said that burning on the altar will be all night unto the morning and the fire of that altar shall be burning in it. Regardless, that fire must be burning continuously, consistently, continually, whether there is something on the altar or not, there must be a body. So he said, let's continue. So he said, and the priest shall put on his lining garment. Yes. Shall be put upon his flesh. Uh -huh. Take up the ashes which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering on the altar. And he shall put them beside the altar. Continue. And it shall be put off his garment. And he shall put off his garment and put on the other garment and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a what? A clean place. Yes, continue. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn. There may, may, there may be many other sacrifices that will be designed that men will eat from and other things. This one, eh? I don't want anybody to take anything out of it. I want it to burn until it becomes ashes. And when it becomes ashes, take the ash out of the camp and go and throw it away. But even in that moment where it has burnt out and it has become ashes, and it doesn't look like, it doesn't seem to be that there is anything on the altar, eh? the fire must still be on the altar. I was thinking that the fire will be needed just because of the sacrifice that is on it so that it can burn out. God is saying beyond just a sacrifice being burnt out, upon that altar of the burnt offering, of the peace offering particularly, okay, the fire will continuously be burning. You will notice that he didn't even say that you will have to put, you would have to put a sacrifice on the altar Every day. He said, you must put wood. Did you see that? You must put wood every morning. The reason why God was doing this with respect to the birth of his is because of what he wants us to understand with respect to that sacrifice. That very sacrifice called the birth of it. It is because God is not willing or God was not willing to share that sacrifice with anybody. He didn't want it to be something that anybody will have something to take out of. He wants it all for himself. He didn't want to share. He wanted it to burn out. Burn it completely so that there is nothing left for any other person to have. I want it all to myself. There are many things I may want to share. There are many things I may want to give to other people. But you see this particular one, permit me to be stingy on it. Burn it till it becomes ashes. And when it becomes ashes, Go and throw the ashes away. If you get another one, put it on it and let it burn till it burns out. But even while all these things are happening, if there is one thing that must not go out, it must be the fire. You see, I was thinking that before I had to do this study, I was thinking that when there is a sacrifice that is the excuse for the fire to come but then i realized that much more than the sacrifice the excuse for the fire to come is actually the altar is the altar that keeps the fire burning 
you know one of those times in Genesis I don't want to read it for time's sake because we have taken quite a number of time to do so much but one of those times in the my book has even I don't know where it is again one of those times in scriptures most um, Abraham was journeying when he was journeying to the place where God will show him when he got somewhere around better scripture made us understand that one of the things he did right was that he raised an altar and when he raised that altar and he left and he passed that place many years after many years after he had come and gone Isaac had come and Isaac was almost going and one of those days Jacob was going to pass through that same place where the altar was laid and when he came to somewhere around where Abraham raised an altar the Bible says he slept he didn't pray did you notice that he wasn't praying he wasn't even raising an altar he slept and in the place where he slept scripture said that he had an encounter when he woke up his verdict was that God was in this place and I knew not so even after Abraham had come and gone whatever it was okay that Abraham did that brought God down to that location okay God did not leave that location even after Abraham was gone until I can only imagine that many people had passed through that land I can only imagine that many people had come and gone okay but there was nobody who was probably sensitive enough or who was in alignment enough to dictate that God was there until Jacob came many years after the actual man who was the sacrifice or who burnt a sacrifice there the, the land was still speaking because of what he did so when God said that the fire must be burning continuously and one of the secrets to the burning of the fire is the wood and that wood is actually symbolic of the very word of God I hope you know but much more than the word of God itself what I want us to see is the fire there's a reason why he doesn't want that fire to go off because that fire represents not just literal burning in itself, much more than just the burning, it represents God himself. And he's saying that this particular offering that you are bringing on this altar, I want to consume it. All right, let me show you this. Isaiah 42. Okay, before we do Isaiah 42, let's do Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4, 23. Deuteronomy 4, 23. He said, Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and made you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God had forbidden. Now, you see, he's trying to address something here. He's saying, see, all of you take heed. You know, if God has forbidden certain things, he doesn't want you to go into them. He doesn't even want to share you with anybody. So because of that, you should be careful. Verse 24. Then he went for that to say, look at what he said. He said, for the Lord thy God is what? is a consuming fire even what you know when we talk about the consuming fire God, God be the consuming fire most of the times we talk about it from the standpoint of God destroying our enemies right or when they want to threaten you about God one of the things they make you understand is see our God is a consuming fire so if you do anything wrong he will just destroy you no it is much more than that it is the very fact that God is a jealous God eh? that gave him that title as a consuming fire so they are telling us here in this scripture that see god is not willing to share you with anybody so take heed to yourselves he has built a covenant with you and he doesn't want you to be shared with another he is, he wants you all for himself and so when they were trying to explain that they now said because our god is a consuming fire and then he now explained what he meant by a consuming fire he said even a what is jealousy it is je it is that nature of God 
that is jealous that wants to make him have you all to himself so when God is referring to you as a bond offering because I hope you know you are a bond offering or you don't know you are a bond offering yes when God is referring to you as a bond offering it is with respect to the fact that he doesn't want to share you with another he wants to have you all to himself okay let me show you this Isaiah 42 Isaiah 42 verse 8 look at this introduction he said I am the Lord hmm? I am the Lord means what what does it mean to be Lord What's, what the, what does the word Lord mean it means owner yes that's what it means that's where you get the word landlord from landlord is the land is the owner of the land so when he said i am the lord he is telling you that i'm the owner i'm the lord of what he said that is my name that's that's my name please follow this there's a, there's a reason i'm stressing on this introduction he said that's my name he said and my glory will i not give to another neither my praise to what to graven images now you see in this scripture you will see the height of God's jealousy when you hear my glory will I not give to another you are tempted to think that he's saying that okay for example maybe somebody is healed now and then you are now um, somebody now wants to take God's place as if he's the one that did the miracle you know and then he's taking God's glory that's that's true but that's just a little part of the entire truth much more than that you assuming the place of God and all that there's something God is saying here so let's go to Isaiah 43 verse 7 let me show you he said even everyone that is called by my word now did you notice how 42 verse 8 began I am that is what yes but now 43 verse 7 is now beginning with some he said everyone that is called by my name is it, it means that if he's saying in the earlier verse that i am the lord i am the owner and that is my name and he said everyone that is called by my name he's saying everyone that i own for i have created him for what for what my glory so when god is saying that my glory will i not share with another okay he's beyond just somebody say giving god praise instead of giving god praise you are giving a man the praise as if he's the man that did it that's the list of it is the very fact that god does not want to share you with another i have formed him yeah and i have made him but you see the extent of this jealousy is the fact that god was saying that he will not share his glory with another then he now went for that to say go to go to the elawa we read 42 verse 8 look at the last thing he said there he now went on to say neither my praise to do you know what graving images are have you heard the word you know where grave the word graving is coming from from what word grave now Please listen, listen to the extent of God's jealousy. When we say grave, and we are referring to graving images, we are referring to images that don't have life. They don't have any sense. Their perception, they, they, they don't even, they can't receive praise. For example, give me that, give me that bottle of water. For example, somebody can just choose to say that this is the thing he wants to worship okay this is a graving image it doesn't have it doesn't have life hmm? it doesn't have life so you can there's something inside i wanted to just kick it but you can actually just look at it i didn't throw it it just fell but <laughs> you can just look at it and it doesn't you can kick it there's nothing inside all those things that you see in the shrine 
that they do that you see like a man with a head without body and everything there's no difference between that thing and what you are seeing here graving images there may be a wisdom behind it that they've been able to pervert to activate one or two things but what you have within you is bigger than it listen to me even the least christian is more powerful than those graving images hallelujah did you hear what i said let me say it again even the least christian is more powerful than more. you know some of these things we are saying when we are in church you will believe us <laughs> until you now go to your village then they now show you one shrine and then maybe they are scattering the place you, you are now there they say we should kick everything <laughs> Now look at it. After you have finished confessing, you will confess, oh, he that is in me is greater. Greater is he that is in me. Oh, yeah, kick it now. I just leave it. There's nothing inside. It's just... They're actually graving images. They don't have anything in them. But look at the jealousy of God. The height of God's jealousy. Just imagine that if you were married... You know, there are some ladies who, or maybe even guys or something, who maybe like sleeping with maybe a pillow or um, a doll baby by their side. Is it Teddy? Teddy. The teddy. If I even know somebody one time, a lady, she gave the Teddy a name. The Teddy had a name. <laughs> How I even knew that the, she had a Teddy that had a name was while we were talking a long time ago, though. Um, she now asked me my name and I told her Ben. This was a very long time. She now said, oh, really? That's the name of my teddy. <laughs> she bought a big one, kept it in her room. She wants to sleep, she sleeps with the teddy. So just imagine that you are married and then your partner, whether husband and wife, you know, seems to like to sleep with a teddy by the side. So if you are sleeping by the side, the person is sleeping and then there's a teddy by the side. How many of you will be jealous of the teddy? You'll be jealous of the teddy. No, you have you they, no, we need to pray for you. No, you there is there is a need for prayer. Please, sisters, take note of this brother's hands that are up. In case. The truth is, ideally, if you are a normal human being, right? If you are a normal human being, there's, for goodness sake, it's just a teddy. You can even use it to joke. But the abnormal human being may want to go and burn it. But I'm trying to tell you that that's how God is. God will not want to share you with it, Eddie. That's how serious his jealousy is. This is a graving image that cannot even receive praise. That if somebody begins to see that graving image as a human being now, you are seeing the graving image and you are calling the graving image your God, God becomes jealous. That's the extent to which he wants that's the extent to which he wants you, okay? That's the extent to which he wants you to himself. God, see, listen, God takes you seriously. That, that's what I'm trying to say with all these things I'm saying. God takes you seriously. He wants you personally for himself. So he's saying that my glory I will not give to another. And when he's saying, my glory I will not give to another, he's not just talking of praise and worship, like I said. He's speaking about you, you as his own. He's not willing to share you with anybody. It's true. So when the Bible says our God is a consuming fire, he is not just waiting 
No, it's not just waiting for you to do something wrong to come and consume you. That's not what it means. It means that he wants you all for himself. He, if, whether you do something wrong or not, ideally, okay, the consuming fire nature of God is supposed to be active in the life of a believer consistently. It's true. Let's look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 20. I want to teach about this. I don't want to just preach it. I want to teach about it so that somebody will be able to understand some few things. Everything I'm saying now, the truth is I can literally say it in maybe 30 or 40 minutes. But because I want to teach, I want to stress and stretch it so that you, you pick. Jeremiah 27. Look at this. The Bible says, Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me. It was Jeremiah that was speaking. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For I spake and I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. Now, did you know this was happening here? He's saying that, see God, you have, you have set me up. Now it now seems because I seem to have believed you and your word is now in my mouth, I'm now a reproach. People are laughing at me. I've been trying to, you know, express what you have put within me and now I'm looking like I'm, I'm looking strange. I'm looking like a Jew guy because I'm not doing what other people are doing. I'm living apart from what other people will call civilization. And so because of all of these things, look at the decision I made, verse 9. Then I said that I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in what? So because I was, you know, it, it seems as if the laughter of men, the ridicule of the people, I've been able to have, have overcome me. They have subdued me. Now, right now, they try to make me ashamed. I'm now ashamed. They try to laugh at me. They have won. So because they won, I now decided that I will not talk about you anymore. I will just stay on my own. Because it looks like I'm looking like, I'm looking like somebody who is not well. So I decided I will not speak of you anymore. It was when I did that, that this now happened but his word was in my heart as what did you notice his word his word because it is his word that carries the, the fire it is his word that carries the burning there's a reason why i'm bringing this now because the app the, the yes it's fine to use that the normal christian should actually perpetually live like this. I'm trying to expose us to something. That if as a believer we believe in Jesus and then that is enough and there is no fire burning within us, something is wrong with our spiritual health. Please listen to me. Listen to me. He said his word was in my heart as a burning fire shot up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not what? I could not what? I could not stay. I realized that I couldn't help being ordinary. I couldn't help being like every other person. I couldn't... When, when I thought that, okay, maybe I was just doing this thing, you know, and I was doing it too much, have you been in a place before where it, it looks like because of how cold everybody is? So I feel like this sound is a little... Because of how cold everybody is, you being on fire makes you look odd in the midst of the cold people. So because of their coldness, you decided to reduce, reduce your own. 
But it was then he found out that the reason why he was not like other people was because something was burning within him. Somebody said something was burning within him. And that thing that was burning was the word of God. It was because God's word was burning within him and he could not stay. So he found out when he tried to shut up. Because the word of God alive in a man has a burning effect. Are you listening to me? The word of God alive in a man has a burning effect. The reason why as believers we have become so ordinary that we can actually live in the midst of unbelievers while they do what they do and we are comfortable is because the word of God is not exactly alive in us. That we have been able to stay in a place and manage the iniquity of the people. Even though we don't fall into what they are falling into. Even though we are not doing the things that they are doing. But we are comfortable around it. And there is nothing in us that is weeping. Both in prayer and in witnessing to them. It's already an indication that the word of God is not alive within our hearts. It's true. It's amazing that as believers, we have unbelievers in our families and it's not worrying us. See, when I'm saying it's not worrying us, eh, I'm saying... We are not bothered. Even though we pray for them, we pray for them casually. Nothing is telling us that this one is eternally going to be in hell forever. Meanwhile, some of the people that we saw and we refer to as revivalists in their times, okay, were willing to die for territories. Not even family members, were willing to die for territories. How can, he, how can somebody be a believer? And then the people who live in the same compound with you don't even know whether you are born again or not. And you have been born again for 10 years. Saying he's just a good man. Just a good man. Ah, we like him. Mean, they give us food. It's more than just being a good man. The word of God alive in a man has a burning effect. In the book of Luke, let me show you. In the book of Luke chapter 24, verse 30. Luke 24, 30. A popular scripture. The Bible said, and it came to pass. As he sat at meat with them, that he took bread and he blessed it, and he break, and he gave to them. Okay, continue. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the what? The scriptures. Did not our heart burn while he was speaking? Something was happening to our hearts because the word of God alive has a burning effect. And there's a reason why that burning effect is there. It is designed to consume. Somebody say consume. consume. He wants all of us. He wants all of us. You see, this thing I'm saying now is strange to our contemporary Christian we don't know this thing I'm saying the average believer now does not even it's straight maybe maybe you knew it at some point 
but we have been so carried away with the many things in life that we don't know what it means for the fire of God to be burning in our hearts as believers anymore. And the reason, that's the reason why the devil now has given us occupation in church. That's the reason why for all of us, little things becomes our distraction. Little things. If you want to find a place where faults are identified more than anywhere in this world is in church. If you want to find a place where it is so easy to know when this person is doing wrong and that person is doing wrong, it is in church. And the reason is simple. It is simply because our hearts are no longer occupied with his fire. That fire that should be there consistently to burn out every fat, to burn out everything, so that even if at some point the devil wants to introduce it into your heart, okay, and, and distract you, the fire should be enough to burn it. Oh, how comes as believers we can we can be angry with somebody else for a whole year and we still come to church not only come to church we even preach yes. how come lust can enter into our hearts and not just enter it will enter and it will settle and we will stay with it for a long time and we can live with it Because the word of God that burns has been put out. And God's counsel to Moses for the burnt offering is that the fire must not do what? Go out. It must always be there. See, let me tell you. The reason why the contemporary Christian is struggling with prayer. It's not because he's busy. It's because there's no fire. It's not true. There's nobody who is too busy. There's nobody. Are you hearing me? There's nobody who is too busy not to pray. There's nobody who is too busy not to spend time with God. Because that you that is very busy, so busy, all you need is to just fall in love. That's all. That busy you, ba. Just fall in love. All of a sudden, you will find out that you have two, three hours to spare. You will find out that while you were at work in your busy time, as busy as the work was, eh, you are you are doing work. Somebody just did. Somebody stepped on your on your leg like this. You can't wait to go home so that you will, you will share it. It's not, it's not that you cannot say it because you're an adult. You're almost going to say, are we? I will tell my chin do for you. It's just, almost, it's just because you cannot say it. But you can't wait to go home and go and share it with somebody. So you now get home. And before you know it, you have made a call. Guess what happened today? Who asked you? Who asked you? Who gave you work? That's you who, are, who is busy. So when they ask you in church, why, why, did you, why have you not prayed for a long time? Maybe you are in prayer team or maybe you are in whatever team and your team is doing prayer. This is say, I've been so busy. I've been so... I come back, I leave home by 6 in the morning and by, by 9 I'm still on the road before I get home. In fact... While I'm on the road, I'm even walking to my house. I'm already sleeping. So as I just get home, I just fall on the bed. You didn't give us the full story. You didn't just fall on the bed. When you fell on the bed, you called the number. Because you fell on the bed and dialed the number and you were talking for two hours and you did not sleep. But how comes when it's now time for you to pray? In fact, from the road, you have already made up your mind. I'm already tired. There's no need to even try. I'll just go and sleep. I was telling them in the church where I preached this morning. And I was giving them something that was a concern to me. I was explaining to them the Exodus story of Moses and the, and the Israelites. 
you know, in Exodus 32, where scripture was saying that those guys were, when they told Aaron to make God for them because Moses was delaying. And I was telling, I said, the problem for me was that these were the same people who were born in slavery. These were the same people who did not have an option. They, they lived all their lives in slavery. They came, it was God who had mercy on them. And because of the covenant I had with their fathers, delivered them from slavery. And before they left, God even gave them gold and silver. And then somewhere along the line, these people felt like they had become too big. And the reason why they said, give us another God, was because they said Moses was delaying. He was taking time to come down from the mountain. They have now become big boys. Who was a slave? That did not, that was at the mercy of Pharaoh could not decide what to do now he felt like how can you go and meet god and be talking for this long what are you saying we have so many things to do can you just be fast and come down so because he was not coming down, they say give us god and guess who they chose as god the things that god gave them from where they were coming from the contemporary christian now thinks that he has an option because there is no fire the prayerlessness is not because it's not because you are busy no because you will always make out time for what you consider as important do you know that do you know that you will always make out time for what you consider has been important because as busy as you are you will still eat as busy as you are when you have a friend you will still just so the only one that you cannot spend time with is God. It's because something is missing here. That fire that should always be on, never put out. The consuming fire, that very nature of God that we should build as believers, we no longer have it. So when you listen to most of us here now, we talk as believers, when you listen to the average contemporary Christian and he's speaking and you ask him what are his challenges, one of the first things you are likely going to hear is that my prayer life, my study life. And the question is, really, really, when we come to look at this, how should this be a problem? That you are healthy. How should that be a problem? Is that not a sign that something is already wrong? You know that when you are sick, one of the things, for example, if you have a breathing problem, one of the first things that you will notice about it is if you are breathing, you begin to notice that you are breathing. How I many of you understand what I'm saying? You begin to notice. You will notice. What I'm trying to say is that if you are healthy, you will not know when you are breathing. You, you can live for some days and, and not even remember that there is anything like breathing or not breathing. Now, just, just when I said it now, that's when some of you are saying, not true. <sighs> Not true. <laughs> Make a check and say, "Are they brutal?" <laughs> it's true. You have been breathing since, and you're fine. That's because you are healthy. It should be automatic. The same way, a desire for prayer should be automatic. But you see, because it is not automatic, it's already a sign that something is wrong with our spiritual health. And the average believer is not even thinking that that is a problem. Because the fire must never go out. Somebody say the fire must never go out. Hebrews 12. The reason I'm sharing this today is because God is intentional. And he wants to do something in our lives. That's why I'm taking my time. He wants to do something. Hebrews 12, 25 to 29. Look at this. He said, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. 
whose voice then shook the earth but now he had promised saying yet once more i shake not the earth only but also what i want to shake it i want to shake everywhere with my voice remember the word of god i want to shake everywhere with my there's something i want to i want to achieve i want to i want to there are so many things i want to remove when i begin to shake continue and this word yet once more signifies signify the removing of those things that are shaking as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may what i want to separate i want to separate the things that can be shaken from the things that cannot be shaken let's see the thing that cannot be shaken wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be what that's the only thing that cannot be shaken is the kingdom every other thing outside this is what god wants to shake with his word he wants to get them out of the way because it is your distraction the things you are committing yourself to the average believer has now found a way or oh, let me use the contemporary i don't want to use the word average because actually an average believer is the one whose fire is still burning so you, you, you can see that most believers are operating below average unfortunately we have been able to find a way to successfully be able to manage the things of god and manage the things of the world and bring it together and still feel spiritual about ourselves and there is nothing in us that is worrying us so a man can be in church and be loving god eh? and still be still be still be sleeping around still be sleeping And we call that, we call that Christianity, we call that believers. Sometimes it's even the pastor. And still be lying, still be stealing money, still be doing all kinds of things. Still be going from here to here, trying to woo this one, woo that one. In church. Looking for girlfriends up and down. Boyfriends up and down. Say, oh boy, all of us, they do one. All of us, they don't have no time. When the church, now anything they happen now, Pastor. There's no fire. How can somebody live, be in a church for, for five years and be sleeping around and there is nothing he hears in church that makes him realize that what he has been doing is wrong and he must stop it? And every day we come to church, we hear something that stares our appetite. Stares our appetite for every other thing. You come to church and you become more selfish, more greedy, desiring more things. As if you are competing with somebody else. In the house of God. You know, sometimes I think about it and what I, what I imagine is this. That if we get to heaven and then other dispensations are talking about what they were able to use faith to do in their time what will be our own testimony how through faith they conquered kingdoms how through faith they wrought righteousness how through faith men were son asunder should i tell you what would be the most the one we'll be talking about true faith we bought cars i'm trying to tell you how low we have reduced things of hallowed standard how true faith we bought cars ah me i for no marry in a faith faith I claim the man. <laughs> I, when I saw him in church, I, I, I claimed him. I said, you are my husband. There's nothing you can do about it. And, and we married. Then they will now 
Maybe in heaven they will not say, where is the man? He didn't make it. He's in hell. <laughs> How mundane things. I was speaking somewhere the other day and I was explaining certain things to them. Something happened. Very recently. I many of you remember that message I preached on um, weightier matters? How many of you remember? It was recently. And then I was talking about showing mercy. And I even gave an example. Eh? In that very meeting. <laughs> In that, that meeting like that. Somebody came. And when service finished, the person, the person even gave, he said, the person said he came out to give his life to Christ. So the, the person insisted that he wanted to see me. So they brought him to see me. He came and we sat down. And while we were talking, he was telling me things that he had done, things, things. And he finished. He, even, he was even sick. He had some issues that were even physical. I didn't know about it. Because the person who brought him, one of us here, who was even telling me, that when I finished praying for him, that those things, the moment he got up, that those things were gone from his body. Like instantly, he was healed. But it still didn't change what was in his mind. So the guy left, went back, started talking to the person who sent him. I mean, who, you know, even invited him and brought him to see me. Started talking to the person that, ah, that the person he was staying with, you know, had to send him out of the house because the person was doing drugs. And when he told the person that he's now born again, that the person now said he cannot stay with him. So they sent him out. So he was staying at the garage. I heard it for like some few days. I ignored it. I didn't say anything about it. At a point, I now said, okay, let it not look like we didn't help. But of course, I was being cautious because I didn't want to bring him into the house or take him to any house of anybody that... So I, I said... So one of us who had a house, who is a student, but he's staying in the house at the moment. He has not been in the house for a while. And I asked him, I said, okay, that's your house in Karaji. Is there anything valuable inside? He said, no, that there's nothing valuable except his mattress and cooking gas, gas cylinder. I said, okay, let this guy go and stay there. Then let's observe him. I want us to observe, just observe him. So he will come, I give him money, he will go back. The last time he came to my house, I gave him food. He even came and said he wanted Omo so that he would help this guy to wash his clothes. <laughs> so we gave him. Only for them to call me the next day. <laughs> in fact, it was this guy that was in the house that came to my door. The way he even called my name. <laughs> the way he called my name. I, I, you almost think maybe kidnappers are close to the house. So when I came out, <laughs> he now said that somebody in the house just called him. That this guy in the afternoon told the person that he wants to make a call. <laughs> that please, he needs her phone to make a call. So she gave him the phone to make a call. And from afternoon, they did not see him till night. Only for them to enter the room. And found out that the mattress, even the student mattress that they are managing, and the cylinder, and one bicycle that is not working, the guy said he wants to go and fix it. He packed all. <laughs> when I came to the parlor to see this young man whose room they just carried this, his eye was red. I told him, I said, relax, relax, <laughs> relax. There's a, there's, I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> Somebody is going to say, you see, this is the reason why we don't help people. Are you listening to me? The reason why we can say that as believers is because we are still attached to things. See, we're not helping people because, in fact, I'm, I'm looking... To the degree with which I can help, I'm looking for who to help. It has not changed anything. It has not changed anything. 
and I was explaining to them somewhere. I said, for example, hmm? come. If I'm giving you this, have you seen that scripture where the Bible said that we should not lay up our treasures on the earth where moth and rot and thieves can steal, but we lay our treasures in heaven? What does it mean? How can you lay your treasures in the earth? If, for example, this is something of value and I gave you, okay, like this, and the reason I'm giving you is because I want everybody to see. Let me see if I still have any money, okay. And then I'm giving you, and it's because I want everybody to see that I'm giving you money. Right? So I bring it out. Okay, I thought I, I thought I have plenty of money. I wanted to do a good example. But since I don't, I'm giving you. I want everybody to see that I've given you money. I say, MC, I want to bless you. So, what can you even do with this? All of this is just so people can see what I'm doing. Then I, and I say, okay, just, it's not much, but just, just hold it. I will get more. If tomorrow you do me something terrible, eh, and you go, I don't have a reward for it from heaven. It has been sorted on the earth. It has been sorted on the earth. Heaven does not even recognize what happened. But if I want to help you, and as a believer, I'm doing it as a believer. Okay? And in your own heart, you are trying to rob me, you are trying to scam me, you are trying to do all these things. But I'm not doing it because of anything. As a believer, because of the very life of Christ that I have, because Jesus has asked us to do it, and I'm doing that to you. Okay? And then you get this, and then you go. Then tomorrow you rob me. I didn't lose. I didn't lose. Because everything I do as a believer, I am doing because of him. And what that means is that my reward is not here. Whatever happens here is, is nothing. See, we must be delivered from this attachment to things. We are not attached to things. So, if somebody defrauds you, okay, I'm trying to tell you something. If somebody defrauds you, stop thinking about it. Somebody now, one of us, of course I know he was being passionate about it, was now trying to ask, what's the, how much, how much are those mattress and the cylinder? I said, why are you asking? Do you want to buy another one for him? He said, no, the thing is paining me. I said, so you want it to now pay you very well. Why are you? <laughs> you will sit down and be calculating what you have lost. Ah. Say, hey. And they just buy that thing for me. Leave it. Are you understanding me? Leave it. Don't be under pressure. Deliver yourself from attachment to things. The life of a man does not consist of the abundance of the things that he what? That he possesses. That's what Jesus said. And believe it. I was now explaining to them how Apostle Arame was even talking about the one where, God bless you, Kavan, was talking about the one where he, um, they, they robbed his, they robbed, they stole his car. And I was telling them, I said, can you imagine? He said God told him before they stole the car. Excuse me, how can God tell you that kind of thing? Why didn't God tell you where to park the car so that they will not steal it? Do you know what God! <laughs> and I was telling them, if it was me that God told that they would steal my car, that day, God has not told me yet to. I use pedal lock on my car. That day I will buy part lock, pedal lock and chain. And they may be long chain, then I will chain it to my waist. God told him that they will steal the car. He said, don't look for it. Can we, can we restore back eh, what it truly means to be a believer? Can we move out of this thing that, that we are doing with this age and go back to what it really means for us to follow Jesus? 
because we if this is what believe, being a believer is in our time we don't have a testimony with god we don't he said i will remove the things which can be shaken wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us receive let us have grace whereby we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear let us please listen he says seeing that we have a kingdom that cannot be moved let us do what what does that mean he's saying that what god is about to do what god is about to do is that he wants to take out the many things around your life that is not connected to kingdom so the counsel he is giving you eh, is that see what god, god god is about to make you lose things if you want to follow god you will lose things are you listening to me if you really want to follow jesus you will lose things i know this does not this does not look like what you will hear now We have become like the messages that we listen to very attached to things very attached if you listen to Jesus eh, if you listen to Jesus you will hear him say things like how that you will be killed for his sake have you seen that before you see when I read those kinds of scriptures I'm asking myself God then help us then what are we hearing because if you if you if a man of god comes now and say you will be killed for jesus sake in this our modern day church everybody will say that's a faithless man what do you mean that you will be killed killed for what i shall not die i shall not die but live <laughs> did you notice when jesus said you'll be killed he didn't say when they took the knife it did not enter he said he didn't say that and when you are killed the moment you die, you will get up again. Then when you look at what we call faith, like I told you that in Hebrews 11, you will now begin to see people, after you have finished telling us that faith is get it now, get it rich, get it now, you will now look at it and begin to read the people who were given as examples of faith in that scripture. Then you now begin to see people like Abraham who had to wait for almost a hundred years before he got a child. And that is faith. Eh? Excuse me. How do you want to tell me about faith? And then you are telling me of an Abel who was killed by his brother. And the only thing you can tell me is that his blood spoke. If if the blood <laughs> oh God, don't tell me this thing. His blood spoke. Eh? After he has died, the blood did not speak to defend him before they killed him. You see, some of these false hopes are the things that we have received that has weakened our faith. So we don't know how to believe God. So a man can follow God for five years. And then after five years, he goes cold. And then you're asking him why he went cold. And he will tell you that the reason is because he trusted God for something. And God did not do it. What did you trust him for? He said, I needed a job. I prayed about it. They even spoke to me, prophesied. And when I went to the, for the job, they didn't give me. That was when I knew that this God thing, it's not real. Did you notice the scripture that Pope read? In the midst of everything, the Bible said, Job worshiped God. In the midst of the strange news he was broken sometimes you will need to you will need to cry but in that cry you will still worship god sometimes you can't say anything you wish things were different but because it didn't change you will still stay there helplessly and then you will just worship him in the midst of everything they just told you that you have been sacked they just told you that you have been trusting God for promotion. They deny you promotion. But you still have the job. You say, but God has been serving you. You may even have your sack letter in your hand. And in the midst of it, things are looking bad. 
you sit down you are finished preaching about the goodness of God yesterday you are the one that they gave service to preach and you finish preaching how God is good how God will bless his people how God will expand them but then the same you now came back and then the first thing you met was a sack later and while you are still struggling with sack later house rent your landlord called you and while you are struggling with all of that the person you want to marry now, now came and said you know what I don't think we are going anywhere with this relationship because you don't look like you don't look prospective you don't there is no then you sit down there you are God alone and before time began you've been on the throne you are God alone and right now through the good times and bad you are the throne. You are God. You are God alone. You are God. Yeah. And before times began, you were on the throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times, through the good times. And bad, you're still on the throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. And before times begun, you were on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, and right now. Through the good times and bad, you are on the throne. You are on. You are God alone. In the midst of all of that, the devil cannot understand why. But what you are trying to say is that not, no one can take your place. I may not have an answer to the problem. But you are still God. You see, that's a sign of the fact that the fire is still burning within your heart and no situation can quench it. Not even the bad news around you is enough wind to put off the fire. So Paul's counsel is seeing that there is nothing that can change this kingdom. We have a kingdom that cannot be moved nothing can be done to alter this even if the disappointments come it still doesn't change the fact that god is king all by himself his counsel now was receive grace he knows that there are times that this immovable kingdom will affect you it will pass through your building it will put an end to certain things that you will consider as what you desire and you will have to lose them because we have a kingdom that cannot be we say he say have grace have grace have grace just in case that's a problem let me tell you our god is a consuming fire and sometimes that his nature as a consuming fire out of his jealousy may burn and in that burning it may even affect your job Sometimes in that burning, it may even affect some other things in your life. But in the midst of all that, still give him the glory. The fire must continually be burning. I have some few scriptures, but I won't have to read them because time is gone. That's where I wanted to even really go to. But I think we need to understand this. That you can't live your life any longer without the burning effect of the word of God. If you do that, you will fail. How many of you have been disappointed in recent times? Something happened to you, you were disappointed. How many of you? In recent times, you have been disappointed. But God is still God. In the midst of it, get up and look for another opportunity to serve him. 
nothing should question the authenticity of the Lord in your life that fire must never must never go out don't stop praying because you're heartbroken don't stop praying because you lost your job don't stop praying because things are not looking like it you are a burnt offering you are his own give him the glory due to him is not a function of the situation you say I'm discouraged even if you don't feel like praying call your few other friends that's why you should have other friends that pray if you don't have hey if you don't have people that you can look up to sometimes as your friends I'm not even saying as your friends two or three people around your life that every now and again you can reach out to to say let's because of how weak you are. Bro, you're in danger. There may be days you, you don't feel like praying. Just call them. Say, guys, can we come? Just be praying. Let's be praying. You, you sit down there. Maybe nothing is coming out. Just cry. Or stay there. Stay in the family of God's people. You, you were discouraged. And because of that, you didn't come to fellowship again. For almost five months, they have been calling you, go. Stay in the company of God's people. Let them just pray. Sit down there. Say, God, it is hard. But you are faithful. It looks like it is difficult. I cannot understand, but you are faithful. Joshua Selman said, if you have five foolish friends, you didn't count well. You see, out of you, you say there are five. You didn't count them. They are trallises. And you know who the sixth one is. <laughs> By all means, the fire must continually be burning. Even when you feel cold, don't encourage the coldness. The fire must continually be burning. You were God alone, and before times began, you were on your throne. You were God alone. You were God alone, and before times began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. And before times began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. And before times. Oh, oh, oh.
the situations notwithstanding God is God all by himself don't even allow the situations to get your attention instead of meditating on the problem meditate and worship God some of us our gods now have become our problems for some of us we are we are now worshiping the problem unknowing to us as we keep dwelling on it lamenting about it complaining every day that has become our god and god is saying can you leave that and focus on me don't let anything steal your gaze from God. Did you notice what God did to the children of Israel when they left the, when they left Egypt and then they got to a place and then snakes began to bite them and people were dying? The solution to the problem was God now asked Moses to make a brazen serpent and put it and say, let the people fix their gaze on that brazen serpent. Symbolic of me, regardless of what was biting them around. He said, don't look at the serpent. Look at me. I know that there are things that are biting. But can we take our eyes off and look at it? By all means, worship God. Don't let the situations put out the fire. It must continually be burning. Keep your prayer life alive. It must continually be burning. If you felt like you made a mistake, run back to him. That's not a time to stop praying. That's a time to stay praying. Go back into the door. Shut the door. Say, God, help me. You were God alone. And before times began, you were on the throne. You're God alone, and right now, and right now, in the good times in them, you are God alone, you are on your throne, you are on the throne. Yes. Yes. Ah, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. I need to go now, all eyes closed. Thank you, Jesus. If God permits, we'll continue. There's a place we need to get to. If God permits, we'll continue. But all eyes closed, Father. Very quickly, if you are here and you are not born again, I want to pray for you before I pray over the house because I need to say what I'll pray over the house now. Maybe you were born again and you backslidden, or you are not even born again at all, or you are not even sure if you are born again or not. I want to pray for you. As all eyes are closed, I want you to raise your hand above your head. You want to say, I want to come back to Jesus. I want to know him intimately. I've lost it with Jesus and I want to know him. As all eyes are closed, I want to pray for you. If you're like that, raise your hand above your head. God bless you. God bless you. If you want to join him, I want to pray. The Lord actually showed me that young man, spoke to me about you, but I need to join. That's the reason why I stopped. If not, I didn't want to. I just wanted all of us to pray today. But God said, there's a young man. I need, I need, I'm using him for something mighty. And 
That's why I stopped. But if you want to join him, I want to pray now. All right. So I want you to talk to God where you are. Tell him, God, I'm sorry for my wrong. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me. Make me a new person. Restore your fire. Restore it. In Jesus' name. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. I'm sorry for my wrong. I acknowledge that you died for me. You shed your blood for me. And today I've come to accept your life. I ask that you be my Lord and my Savior. And I will be your own now and forever. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' name. I'm praying for you. Father, I thank you for this precious life. You who has kept us from falling and is able to keep us keep him from falling. Let the power of sin be broken from off his life. And you use him for your glory. His path shall be as the path of the just that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. From now henceforth. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody just lift up your hands. You can stand. I'm going down now. You can just, a slip would have been handed over to you. After the, please, but not now. Let me finish. Everybody just lift up your hands. Put your right hand on your chest. And lift up your other hand. Dear Lord Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you set our hearts on fire for you again. Yes, we know. It's true that we love you. But, oh God, we also know that there's this coldness towards you and the things that concerns you. The fire that we have, as far as we are concerned, is not sufficient. Lord, we want more. We want more. That fire that does not make serving you laborious, that fire that makes prayer something that we desire something that we look forward to something that we are not in a hurry to get out of that fire that makes your word our delight that fire that makes intimacy sweet fellowship deep That fire that makes us desire you as the deer pants after the water brooks, so our souls will long for you. Wow. So our souls will long for you. Jesus. So our souls we long for you. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. See the angel of his presence is touching. Now, this is a token. It's not as if it's just it's because of the person. It's because of what he's doing to our hearts. To everyone that is listening to me under the sound of my voice. This is a token. It's a token. Yes. He's opening the heart of a particular sister and he's opening it wide. I can see a long... A, 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 an, 
I cannot explain this thing, but it just it's just like an expression. That's the best way I can explain it. Like where sound, you know, and light is expanding, you know, and is boiling like a hole into your heart. It's commanding access to his people. Access. 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 Some of you are in this meeting tonight and you don't know what has happened to you because you just sat down listening to what you may want to call a boring sermon because it was too calm. But you have no idea. The weight of his glory that has sat in your spirit. And you will leave this place. Ah. 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 Sweet fellowship. Sweet fellowship. Sweet fellowship. The Lord is occasioning a longing in your spirit. When you step into that experience, the lost will die. A natural death, the lost will die. Pride will die. Anger will die. It will suffocate in the fire of his presence. Jesus. You see that? Jesus. You see that? Such a cloud of his glory. You see that? Oh, such a cloud of his glory. He's taking us into a place in him. Into a place in him. Oh, Jesus. 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 Yes. 
and we are being baptized into the cloud. We want to be with you. Show us your face, oh God. We want Show us your face. We wanna be with you. Show us your face beyond the performances. What God wants to build is intimacy. God wants to drown your flesh and the way he wants to do it is by his fire Some of you this week just deliberately deliberately take out time with him we want to be with you because we can't do so much here tonight but deliberately take out time with him show us your face see god setting us on fire like a torch Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.